the capital of Tobago and was the most fought for settlement throughout the history of Trinidad and Tobago. Did you know that Georgetown was the first capital of Tobago? The settlement was named to honor George III, who was the reigning English king. Today, however, that village is known as Studley Park. Now, I'm going to take you back in time as this week marks the beginning of the Scarborough sequel. Where should we start first? Stick around to find out. I'm Davia Chambers and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. We have details on the Heritage Festival opening night, hurricane season 2016, and later, commissioning the Arrow Room at Montgomery Government Primary School. These stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago continues. Hey, why don't you step into the Scarborough Library facility? It has all the knowledge of our land, people and heritage that you just won't find online. The Scarborough Library facility is now open. Tobago Library Services. Information inspires innovation. Did you know that this year, Tobago enjoyed its most successful cruise season ever? Yes. During the last cruise season, more than 100,000 guests and crew visited our island. They took tours, bought craft, hired taxis, ate in restaurants, drank rum punch, and the list goes on. But most of all, they spent more than $50 million right here on the island. And where did that money go? Right in the hands of the small man. And the Division of Tourism and Transportation is working hard to ensure that next year there will be even more ships and more guests. So, so let's, let's join, join them and embrace, embrace tourism because, because tourism is all our thing. We're here at James Park, which is a stone throw away from the Assembly Legislature building. James Park was named to honor Alfonso Filbert Theophilus Fargo James, also known as APT Fargo James, a former member of the Trinidad and the Tobago Legislative Council. Now we're going to switch views as we bring back the old time days. Our leading story focuses on us celebrating the traditions of the past. Opening night for the Tobago Heritage Festival took off with a bang as the stage production jogged the memories of many about success in hard times. Caroline Wallace takes us to the Shaw Park Complex for the highlights. This stage production was the headline performance on opening night of the Tobago Heritage Festival at the Shaw Park Complex. The theme for the 2016 celebration is Bring Back the Old Time Days, Cut and Contrive. It's a concept aimed at reminding Tobagonians of the island's past successes in times of adversity. Bring Back the Old Time Days takes into consideration the present economic condition and seeks to present a response. Cut and Contrive for this year is such response. It says to us to stand, look back, calculate, and then move forward. It speaks to being frugal. It speaks to saving. It speaks to being careful as to how you use the limited resources that you have. The festival not only highlights the island's traditions, but the qualities of resilience, being frugal, and having a spirit of community. The only time a people lose their identity is not when they embrace new ideas or new technologies, but when they lose the substance of their heritage and their culture. Our Tobigonian identity has been the hallmark of our success, regardless to where we have journeyed. In London, we are still Tobigonians. In New York, we are still Tobigonians. In Trinidad, we are still Tobigonians. And anywhere else in the world we journey, we 
are still to be Goonians. The Miss Tobago Heritage Personality Show and the Mariah Old Time Wedding are among the most highly anticipated heritage events. But the island is also being urged to ensure the message isn't lost in the entertainment. But it's also about instilling pride in our, in our history and pride in that heritage. Because too many times we as Tobagonians do not appreciate what has happened in the past and are able to take pride in that. And by taking pride in that, we of course can inspire ourselves in the present and in the future. Among the dignitaries attending this year's celebrations was U.S. Ambassador to Trinidad and Tobago, John Estrada. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. APT Fargo James was the instigator behind Tobago's first bid for self-governance for the island. This took place in the 1940s as he gathered people from different sectors of the island to fight for the common cause. Now let's divert your attention. Tobago's early childhood educators engaged in a professional training program to sharpen their skills for the classroom. Kern De Freitas has the details in this report. Effective classroom management strategies and teaching practices were the major topics at the professional training program for early childhood educators on the island. We have the schools coming forward doing their lesson plans and executing it before the others so that we can critically analyze and see where we go wrong, see how we can improve as well as take ideas from one another. Practical skills played a major role in the training. Take a look at the set introduction for a lesson on parts of an egg. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, Humpty Dumpty had a brave fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together What do you think Humpty Dumpty is? Auntie, Auntie, an egg. An egg? You think it's an egg? Okay. We want you to use a little scientific term. When you broke the egg in its raw stage, it is liquid. When you boil it and it gets firm, it's solid. And you could have also included some math by cutting the egg in half. You talk about half, you talk about the two pieces. You talk about whole, talk about half. And you have math. That's three subjects in one lesson. This year's theme is rebuilding early childhood care and education in the Tobago preschool context. This is one of seven workshops that will be hosted by the Early Childhood Unit of the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport as the unit fulfills its mandate to improve the sector. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. Alfonso would later serve on the Legislative Council in 1961 where he fought for but was also granted an additional seat for Tobago in the Legislative Council. He passed away in 1962. Now men play a major role in society and this report tells us about a program empowering the men of our society. Have a look. The role of men in changing society, sex and gender, relationships and fatherhood. These are some of the topics discussed at the recent Men's Empowerment Program held in Tobago. The program is meant to help men better understand their roles in their families and society and to be empowered to stride forward with confidence. Our sons are looking for mentors and we have been called upon to be exemplars. And so I am sure that this workshop shall indeed impart the kind of information which if you were only to act upon it, then it shall serve to further increase your awareness, remind you of the power of your influence. It's amazing what one man can do, you know. When that man is thoroughly informed, he knows what's expected of him, and he's determined to make a difference. The participants were also keen to join in the question and answer segment. Mr. Stewart. The question I would like to find out, why men of a certain age, like, let me say, for example, a man 60 years of age, right, and a young man of 30 years, why would he think that the one of 30 years would not make a good leader? We judge a person's capacity based on our own. 
And so if at 30, I don't think I could have done that, it is hard for me to see how you can. So we have a prejudging thing that, that goes on, and that could be one of the reasons. I don't know what else might be. It might be that the person has showed that, uh, some capacity that they are incapable to be able to perform as a leader at 30. The young men were also advised to become solution-oriented as an approach to solving their problems. Men, we got to take up our role. For far too long, we continue to sleep. For far too long, we continue to complain. And, and, and when you complain, you just complain with nothing that brings to the table to call a solution. We just complain because we feel like complaining. We get up in the morning and we use the airway. I love to listen to the airway. And each time I listen to the media in the morning time, I ask myself, you are complaining. Could you give us some solution? The event was put on by the Children and Family Services Unit of the Division of Health and Social Services. I'm Kuhn DeFritas for Let's Talk Tobago. Up next, details on the hurricane season 2016. Don't go anywhere. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Stay with us. Take a second look at this building. Can you identify where in Scarborough we're located? If you said Uptown, then you are correct. This is the Assembly Legislature building, and members of the House of Assembly met in Georgetown for the first time in April 1768 to conduct their meeting before being relocated to this compound in Scarborough. Now, there's an old saying, prepare and prevent. Don't repair and repent. Now, if a hurricane was to hit this island right now, would you be ready? If you said no, then don't panic. Here are the details on what you need to do to prepare for this event. The 2016 hurricane season may be a powerful one. The Tropical Meteorology team at Colorado State University predicted 13 named storms in their April forecast and their July revision has updated that figure to 15. Six of those storms will become hurricanes, and two could be major ones. That's according to the Weather Network. So, Tobago is taking precautionary measures to save lives, and the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, Timor, started with a communications drill at the Fairfield Complex. We recognize that it became imperative to allow our citizens and also our members of staff to be actively prepared for the upcoming hurricane season. Um, so we have chosen a communication drill under the name Exercise Turbulence um, to look at various elements of our communication assets and to look at their functionalities. Mr. Stewart says the agency is also collaborating with various village councils to ensure that community centers which will be used as shelters in the event of a hurricane, are fully functional. The shelters, especially those that need to be activated in a quick order, those primary shelters such as community centers, are well manned and also well tooled, meaning therefore they have the necessary resources. He's reminding the public to enter the season prepared. So we ask family members at this time to pay attention to their roofs. You can ensure that your roofs are properly secured. You can ensure at this time, every time you go to the supermarket, that you pick up uh, emergency food stuff to make that pack. You make sure that you have emergency supplies. The hurricane season started in June and ends in November. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. Lamsonsburg was renamed Scarborough in the 1700s. It was formally recognized as the capital of Tobago in 1768. 1769, however, marked a new beginning for the Tobago House of Assembly. This was the year they relocated to Scarborough. 
Now let's get down to some fashion business as the industry is being recognized for its potential. Fashion TT paid a visit to this island to give some tips on how our designers can better their brand. Here's more. This is Darian Phillips, proud owner of Euphoric Designs. She met with an international panel of fashion experts whose objective is to help her improve her brand. It's all part of Fashion TT's non-global value chain support program. The initiative is aimed at developing the local fashion industry and increasing fashion exports from Trinidad and Tobago. The panel will um, take notes, copious notes, and um, carefully um, identify those designers which meet the criteria for further um, in investment or selection of a program to continue what we consider the non-GVC program for next year. Designers have a chance to showcase their um, items and their, their, their products. And uh, the other part is that we will uh, have given them feedback, uh, valuable feedback, into how to grow their business. Those that qualify for the program get support to improve up to two elements of their value chain by refining their in-house performance. Three to five designers from Trinidad and Tobago will be offered support for one year. While Darian hopes she is chosen, she's grateful for the recommendations given. I actually got a lot from it, so I would, mostly it's up to me now, basically, to put stuff in place, the advice, take the advice that they give to me and build my business. Basically, to have my business plan and make sure I have my finances intact and that kind of thing. Participants will benefit from fashion production support. The Tobagonian designers were assisted by the Division of Finance and Enterprise Development. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. Fort King George was constructed on the heights above Scarborough between 1777 and 1779 by the British. However, after nearly 20 years of peace, the French took Scarborough and renamed it Port Louis, while Fort King George was renamed Fort Castries after a high-ranking French official in Tobago. However, after the French Revolution, the British repossessed Tobago in 1793, restoring Port Louis and Fort Castries to its former names Scarborough and Fort King George. Busy hands are happy hands, and the same can be said of this group of students who are making themselves busy for the school holidays. I'll leave Keyshawn Wilson to tell you what I mean. Children across Tobago are learning to play various musical instruments, like the guitar, flute, and the violin at the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sports Musical Experience Camp. At the end of the, tw uh, the 14 days, really, of the camp, we are expecting students to have a great appreciation of the musical instruments available to them. Right? In addition to these instruments, conventional instruments, we also have steel bands at four different stations. Right? The idea is to apply the instrument learned to basic music literacy. Abigail is one of the many students attending this year's edition of the camp. She's learning to play the guitar and is quite excited to begin the journey. I've learned chords and it has been so fun and I, I can't begin how to explain my joy. The hope is that at the end of the two weeks, the participants will have increased appreciation for music and understand the benefits to be involved in the music industry. We are, seeing, we are seeing growth in terms of the music industry. We are seeing growth in terms of the number of people participating in the entertainment industry. You because know? we know people from the camp would have gravitated towards that. We are seeing improved performances uh, and students entering tertiary level education coming from this program. So the tracking that we do somewhat tells us that, listen, we're doing something that is fairly all right. The camp ends on July 29th with a grand concert at the Cats and Jammers Pan Theatre in Black Rock. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. Commissioning of the Arrow Room at the Montgomery Primary School. Don't move. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. 
Going to Barbados? Why continue to pay high prices when you can get there for only US $231.95, all taxes included? Yes, you heard right. You can now travel to Barbados from Tobago for a mere US $231.95 on Gold's weekly service. So if you're going to Barbados for business, the beach, crop over, or attending university, stop wasting your money on those other high-priced airlines and get there for a fraction of the cost. To book, just log on to www.vogel.com.br. Barbados just got closer. at 8 o'clock every night when all the shops closed and people were safely home. This tradition continued into the early 20th century. Now the Arrow program is finally implemented at the Montgomery Primary School and the students now have the opportunity to use this program for reading, spelling and comprehension skills. Omid Arrow Mills has this report. These children are just a few of those at the Montgomery Government Primary School who are improving their reading abilities using ARO. It's a computer-based literacy program designed to help pupils improve their reading, spelling, and comprehension skills. One of the three trained ARO tutors in the latest batch is Crystal Wilson Anderson. She's excited about the implementation of the program at the school, especially since she's observed improvements in the literacy levels of the pupils who use the program. Behavior for a good bit of them has actually changed because it's no longer that I can't, but I can. And the little that they would have achieved over the period, because it would have been about a term, a term and a half, the little that they would have achieved over the period, they have moved from that where I can't and I would act out in class to where I can and they are now ready to learn. The Arrow Foundation supplied the training and the software, while the school took up the challenge to prepare a room for the six computers, two smart televisions and furnishings, resources that were sponsored by the Citizens Security Program, CSP. CSP also funded a three-year license of the Arrow software. As you know, the Citizen Security Program is a crime prevention program that treats with the core factors that tend to put people at risk and not necessarily with the crime itself. And so in looking at the risk factors, we, we understand clearly that literacy has some relationship with it, and we've been working over the years to improve the literacy levels at the school, in particular functional literacy, reading, um, writing, and in some instances, math. The CSP also handed over equipment for sporting disciplines such as track and field, swimming, and football. It's hoped to improve the children's athletic performance and give them a more positive avenue to channel their energies. With the involvement of sport, we're looking not at the immediate development, but hoping that these children would stick with it so it presents hope, it presents a future for them. So we know that in the long term, a lot of these students who we will continue to follow may be the recipients of scholarships, may get international programs, so it makes their lives a little bit more focused and so the detraction of getting involved in other kinds of negative behaviors tend to be reduced. In 2008, the CSP started its work in three communities on the island, One Accord, Bethel, and Darrell Spring. Its mandate is to foster reduction in crime by engaging residents in positive activities. Their initiatives are supported by the THA since they fulfill a part of the Assembly's mission for a safer Tobago. 
I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. This underground water cistern tank was built to construct and store rainwater. After the British troops left Fort King George and Tobago in 1854, the tank was never used again. Now, do you remember racing a box cart down the hill as you screamed for dear life? Well, this story speaks to the Miss Heritage Personality 2016 show, boasting the theme, Remember When. Here, nine of Tobago's finest young women competed for the crown and the title. Here are the highlights. Nine beautiful ladies from across Tobago participated in the prestigious Miss Heritage Personality 2016. But after a grueling talent segment and evening gown portrayal on the theme, Remember When? I remember when we four fathers used to slave in the hot sun and rain for nothing. Remember when Mata was judge, jury, and executioner, and it's the same Mata hand that feed you and gear water. Remember when they say, Mata they don't, and black man ain't have to slave for free? In those days, we were a community. We had spirit. So the purity, the love, the underlying unity that Tobagonians exemplify in rebuilding a stronger island. The top five contestants were then chosen to participate in the much anticipated question and answer segment, which decided the winner. When I am crowned Miss Heritage Personality 2016, some of the things that I would like to see implemented within the Tobago Heritage Festival will be the involvement of the differently abled. Oftentimes, we tend to forget that they make up this 116 square mile island. By having them involved in events such as the Folk Fiesta, which showcases the natural talents of Tobagonians, will enable them to know that they have aided in the process of she becoming more beautiful. Thank you. After it all, Lisel Javier Taylor, representing Bethel, was named Miss Heritage Personality 2016, walking away with $10,000 and a $25,000 scholarship sponsored by First Citizens. Miss Pembroke Cavell Gordon was runner up, and third was Miss Monks and George Chantel Henry. Special awards went to Miss Carbro, who won Miss Photogenic, Best Talent, and Best Design Evening Gown Awards. Miss Pembroke Cavell Gordon was named Miss Intelligent as she topped the pre interview segment. Miss Congeniality went to Miss Castaro, Leah Toya Roach. I'm Carolyn Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. It's Have Your Say Time and our question this week is, what kind of development do you think Tobago needs? Here's what you had to say. Tobago needs more development in its recreational grounds and its sporting facilities for the public, especially for for the development of the youths. More development team with the marine life. Because I'm a spear fisherman and I can see the coral resource stuff going through. Greater improvement in customer service. I think Tobago needs more um, opportunities for entrepreneurs and this will definitely help boost the Tobago's, Tobago's economy. The youths need to have like different sports, right? Um, in terms of, instead of having football and cricket as a major sport, you can have like, a different sports from worldwide, right? Had the um, coaches come in and coach different sports so that we are a different society within people having to be like this one all the time. We have a lot of multifaceted complex where you have like tennis and cricket. You could come and do everything one place. So we're going to need more activities for the children. We close another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel.
from our house to yours. I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close with a montage of the Mariah Old Time Wedding 2016. Do enjoy.